what's up everybody welcome back so i just want to do a short video on casting especially if you're new to unreal there's a lot of misconception about casting and if you can use it and if you're on a forum you may get the advice from you shouldn't cast or casting is bad uh, but don't really get an explanation why so i just want to talk a little bit about it it's not going to be a very long video um, I recently came across a video from the Unreal Fest presentation that's called Myth, Myth Busting Best Practices in Unreal Engine. And there's uh, some information from that video in here. So I'll link that video at the end and I'll put it in the description as well. So uh, you can check it out. There's a lot of uh, other stuff in there as well about using Event Tick and stuff like that. Uh, I just wanted to make this video for people that needed a little bit more explanation or wanted to have some visual stuff to back it up. So that's why I'm here. Um, now casting, it's not necessarily bad. There's some context about it. Uh, the issue is not the actual cast node. There's no real big overhead or workload. It's not really expensive to use the cast node. The problem is uh, you can easily create uh, hard references and especially asset chains in your project and that will make it quote unquote bad so for example uh, to start with the hard references and the asset chains i have three blueprints here just a simple uh, static mesh with a material and in here in the event graph i use the begin overlap and then cast to the other blueprint so i have a cone a cube and a sphere Inside of the cone, I cast to the cube. Inside of the cube, I cast to the sphere. And the sphere is actually totally empty. Now, if I'm going to right click on the cone and go to the reference viewer, you will see that the cone references the cube and the cube references the sphere. Sorry. So these are dependencies. And as soon as I load the cone, all of the dependencies need to be loaded as well. So I'm going to create an entire chain of assets uh, that will be loaded as soon as I put this cone in my level. And uh, this is not really a big deal if it's something small like this that only has a material and a static mesh. But you can imagine if this would be an endgame boss or a trap in your level, for example and you're going to cast to it inside of your character when that does damage to the player uh, but the trap or the endgame boss may only exist in one level uh, but as soon as you load that character everything inside of this blueprint will be loaded as well and since it's inside of your player character that will probably be loaded for the entire game um, so that's something you really should avoid uh, because then things can get really ugly really soon um now there's not really uh, the big deal with the actual cast node as i mentioned as soon as you create a hard reference to something uh, that will be the same so over here again i have the cone the cube and the sphere but this time i don't have anything in the graphs there's no cast node but i created a variable so simply the cube variable inside of the cone and inside of the cube i created the sphere variable and again, if we look at the reference viewer, we see the exact same thing. So it's not the actual casting that creates the reference. As soon as you have a hard reference to an object or a blueprint or whatever, uh, that will be loaded. And uh, this is just an empty reference. So it's not actually pointing to any actor over here. You can see there's nothing assigned. But because you can drag it in and actually access it, so I can get the sphere from here. That means uh, this is a hard reference and this is loaded into the memory. And that's what actually causing the problems. So that's something you want to avoid. And how can you avoid that? Well, uh, it kind of depends on uh, what you want to do, obviously. So um, you can pretty much cast to any class that is uh, a default class in the engine. So if the class is defined in C++, uh, that means it's a pretty light class. Uh, even the character class in C++ isn't that big. And uh, those will always be loaded anyway. So for example, if you want to access something uh, that's on a default class, you can simply cast to that. So over here, for example, I made the player controller. 
inside of my player controller i can get the control pawn which is a pawn object reference and if i just cast through the base character class even if uh, i want to access a third person character or a custom character that i created for my project that will always inherit from the character class so i can cast through that and because the character class has the character movement component by default it has a mesh by default i can just use that to actually do stuff like set the maximum walk speed or change the skeletal mesh on that character without actually casting to the custom class that you created in blueprint so that's a really handy workaround because as i mentioned these c classes will always be loaded in the memory and if something is already loaded in the memory it will not be loaded again uh, it won't load it twice unreal is uh, smart enough to do that so then you can just cast to it and it won't actually cause any extra overhead or uh, memory loss so uh, always try to cast to the lightest class possible and uh, for example you can also uh, use interfaces obviously so if i have a widget blueprint and in the graph i want to uh, do something on the game mode and i have an interface on my game mode then i can just get the game mode which is also loaded by default because every game has a game mode and that inherits from this game mode so then uh, we can get out get the default game mode class don't cast to anything and just use that to uh, make an interface call on the game mode and you can also for example over here create a, a variable or an input pin uh, that's just an actor so this is not actually a character reference it's just an actor and pretty much everything inherits from an actor so you have an object first and then an actor and a lot of stuff just inherits from those classes so i can get the owning player pawn and simply plug in the pawn over here and now on my game mode i have an actor reference to the player pawn or character and i can use an interface from the game mode to make a call on my character for example so uh, in a lot of cases there are quote unquote smart ways to uh, work around it without actually creating any hard references to the classes that you created in blueprints so that's something to keep in mind and then uh, from unreal engine 5.5 .5, there's also a new node they created that's called is a and what this does it will compare an actor or an object actually to a soft class reference so uh, soft classes are not loaded into the memory unless you explicitly tell the game to load them so for example if i have a soft class reference i need to load uh, the class and then it will actually take some time to load it you have a completed pin and then you get the hard reference to the class so you can use a soft references uh, without too much hus hassle and so instead of casting if you just want to check if this is a certain actor type without actually accessing any variables or functions on that class you can use this node in unreal engine 5.5 and that will do the same thing so if it's true it's the class you put in here if it's false it's not and if you're not already in 5.5 you can make uh, the actual functionality of this node yourself by doing this so you drag off the actor and then get the class from that actor you create a soft reference over here to the class that you want so instead of uh, let me show uh, uh, the third person character was this for example so uh, character and then you're going to create a third person character but over here you're going to select the soft class reference and then if you drag off the soft class reference you can do the resolve soft reference and compare those and this will only be resolved if the class is already in memory so it won't load it and if this character is the actual class needed it's loaded in the memory so then this will be true and if it's not loaded then it will be false so uh, this is the same functionality as the new node they created in Unreal engine 5.5 .5. so if you simply want to compare a class and know if it's a certain type you can do this and obviously you can't 
access the class so you can't call any functions on it or stuff like that but in a lot of cases this is useful as well and then obviously you also uh, have the tags on an actor so you can simply go to the class defaults and scroll down uh, it's under actor over here i think yeah under actor and then advanced you can add tags and those are simply just uh, name variables and you can uh, see if that array contains a certain tag and if that contains it you can identify if it's a certain class or not so those are pretty useful things you can use as well without using an actual cast node um yeah well that's pretty much all there is to it i think i said the most things i wanted to say um so the actual video i was talking about also has a little flow chart in it over here and I just made a screenshot from it, so you can screenshot it from here or from the video I'm going to link in a couple of seconds. So if you have an actor reference, do you want to call a function or get a property from it? Yes. Is that function declared in the default class? Then you can simply cast to it, no problem. Uh, is the class expected to be always loaded? So for example, if it's your player character, it will be loaded anyways because you're playing with it. So it doesn't matter, just cast to it. Maybe if you're uh, familiar with C++, you can also define the property or the function in C++ and then override it in blueprints. So you can uh, uh, customize the, the parent class. And then you can also use interfaces. And over here we have the new is a node. So this is a pretty useful flowchart uh, to remind you when to cast or not. Okay, that's pretty much it. Let me show you the video I was talking about. That's this one, and I'm also going to link it into the description. So it's by Ari Arnbjörnsen. <laughs> I'm sorry for butchering your name. But it's actually a really cool video that has some uh, really useful stuff in it. So if you have a bit more time, you can watch that as well. Okay, uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching. Uh, talk to you later. Bye-bye.